Okay, so we're given two lines here, and we want to find the angle between them. And so I wonder if I consider this line, I have a line, and I have another line as such. And if I want the angle between them, well, if I consider this direction vector, the direction vector of this line, that'll be the angle between the two direction vectors is what I'm looking for. And so I can go straight to the direction vectors. And using the direction vectors, I can dot product them because when I use the dot product or scalar product cosine of theta, I can find the angle theta between the two. And so using this idea here, well here is my a vector, and here is my b vector, so it's going to be negative 3, 5, 2, dot, negative 2, negative 1, negative 3, this is going to equal to the square root of well, negative 3 squared plus the 5 squared plus the 2 squared and the square root of negative 2 squared negative 1 squared plus the negative 3 squared and I'm going to cosine theta on the end and so doing this I get negative 6 plus a negative 5, subtract the 6 more, is going to be the square root of 9 plus 25 plus 4, square root of 4 plus 1 plus 9, cosine theta. So cosine of theta will be well, negative 12, will be negative 17 over the square root of square root of 34 times the square root of 14. And so if I go to my calculator now, and if I go second cosine negative 17 divided by the square root of 34 times 14, and this will give me 144. 144.1 and if that's not the acute angle, that's going to be this angle here. So if I want the acute angle, I can just go subtract, or in this case, add the 180, because it's already a negative, oh, no, it's not negative, negative 180. And so then the acute angle theta between the two is 38.8 degrees, correct to three significant figures here. And so that's this angle here. Similarly now, not similarly, but now if I want to find the point of intersection of the two vectors. Well, doing that, I'm going to pull my problem down here so I can see it a little bit better. And so pulling this down, I want to find the point of intersection. Well, if I'm going to find the point of intersection, that means the x value of this first line has to be the same as the x value of the second line. And so I can say that 1 minus the 3t is equal to negative 6 minus 2 lambda. So the x's are the same. Which here, if I rearrange this, I get 2 lambda minus 3t is equal to a negative 7. Okay, and do the next line, I get negative 2 plus 5t is equal to 4 mi 14 minus lambda. So again, I get a lambda plus 5t is equal to 16. And finally, my z value says negative 1 plus 2t is equal to the 8 minus 3 lambda. And I put this across, I know I get 3 lambda plus 2t is equal to 9. And so now I have three equations, three unknowns. If I go over to my calculator, I'm going to go polysimultaneous number two, and I have actually three equations, two unknowns. So let's put them in as such. I get two minus three and negative seven. I get one, five, and 16. And finally three, two, and nine. And if I solve the values, I get my lambda equals one, and my t is equal to 3, 
And so what that means, if I can put the t equal to 3 in here, and I'll get my point of intersection, I'll get the same point as if I plug lambda is 1 in here. And so if I want to actually find the point, if I plug in, uh, maybe the 1 is easier. So x will be negative 6 minus 2. y will be 14 minus 1. And z will be 8 minus 3. And so my point of intersection is simply going to be negative 8, 13, and 5. Because the x is the x, the y is the y, and the z is the z. When you do your poly simultaneous, if, when doing such, if you would do this and you would get no solution, that means that they don't actually intersect which happens in three dimensions.